Well, let's do an example of uh, making it a, a, a boundary value problem, an eigenvalue problem, and uh, going through the whole thing of uh, finding the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. We'll put it in self-adjoint form so we can find the weighting function. And then with the weighting function, we can then define the uh, orthogonality relation so that we can then generate um, the, um, we can expand any function using the series that this thing will generate. Uh, all these eigenfunctions in effect will become the orthogonal and complete set of functions by which we can expand any function uh, by using this orthogonality relation, just like we did with the Fourier series, but now with a different set of functions. So anyway, the first part is find the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. And I'm gonna cheat in solving this equation. Um, I'll just tell you that for negative or for non-positive lambdas, you just get trivial cases. So we're gonna reject all that. And for the positive lambdas, we'll again say lambda equals alpha squared. Uh, there's a technique that I used that I'm not gonna hold you responsible for, but it says, here's then the general solution to that equation or positive eigenvalues. And now here's a part you should be able to do. Given this general solution, find the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues, given, given these boundary conditions. So let's look at X equals one here. X equals one, the natural log is zero, cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, so we'll have C1 equals zero. That leaves us with this function. And we set, uh, let's see, the second condition is five. Put in five for X, it says, and that must equal zero. Well, the sine will equal zero when its argument equals n pi. So we have a way to solve for the alpha sub n's. Alpha sub n's equals n pi over log five for all these positive integer n's. So we found the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions. Once you had this general solution, you should have been able to do that. Now, what's the next thing? Put it in self-adjoint form. Well, let's review. If we have an equation in this form, we can convert it to self-adjoint form using all these relationships. Here's the actual equation we have. Let's compare this equation to this format up here. A would be x squared, B would be x, C, there is no C, C is zero, D is just one, so we have the A, B, C, and D. So now let's start going through this. Um, we're going to need this U. It's the it's this thing here. What is B over A? B over A is X over X squared or one over X. If I do this, E to B, one over X DX. Well, this integral evaluates to the natural log of X. So I have E to the natural log of X, which is just X. So that's our, our, our R function. What else do we need? Um, Q of X is C over A, which was zero. And let's see, P, P over A times mu, what's E over A? One over X squared times the mu, which was X. P over A was one over X squared. U is X, so we have one over X. That's our P, and that's also our 
weighting function for the orthogonality relationship. So we have all the pieces here. Um, you have to go back to what, what is the, uh, here's the self adjoint form. We now have the R, the Q, and the P. So when you plug them into this thing, So here is the same equation as this in self-adjoint form. This equation, self-adjoint form here, and the P, the weighting function, is 1 over X. That's part B. For part C, we need eigenfunctions and the weighting function. We're also going to need the limits. But the orthogonality relationship was we take two of the functions, so we take the eigenfunctions, two different integers, and the weighting function, that's your integrand. And because in this case, we were given explicit boundary limits, x equals one and x equals five. When they're given to you explicitly like that, that would be, that should be the limits of this integral. So well, here's our orthogonality relationship. Yeah, if the boundary conditions are explicit, use them. In this case, they were one and five. If they're not given to you in a problem, just assume the boundaries are, are, the, are the whole interval of convergence. I think I'll... I'll do this vessel thing really quickly next time.